Hello Varlets! This video will be a little more special than the previous ones. If you've seen the trailer for the Redeemer, which we are covering today, you would have noticed that two compatibilities were shown in it. That's because in this build video, we'll be covering two paths you can build the Redeemer. The first is going to be a tried and true defensive support Redeemer with an Eviscerator. The second is going to be an offensive support Redeemer with the Thunderhammer. This build probably isn't going to be for everyone, but I can promise you that there will be interesting things you can learn about it to adapt to your own build crafting. Now, let's get into it. These builds are weapon specific in that while you are free to use whatever you'd like, they work best with the weapons I've attached to them. Keep that in mind if you are mixing and matching different weapons. So, what does a Redeemer bring to the table? Both builds, regardless of which one you choose, offers powerful damage mitigation from your sheer presence alone, strong crowd control and horde management through utility and weapon choices, as well as high ability uptime which equates to more flexible decision making and tactical opportunities. The reason why this video has two builds is because they share the same 22 talent point allocations shown here. This is the base build for your Redeemer, and from here, it branches into two different paths depending on your weapon of choice. Let's start by going over why I've chosen the talents shown. In these dark times, enemies may appear from within or without, so toughen up and be prepared for what may come. Your disdain for the heretics fuels your wrath as you seek them out, running them down wherever you can find them. Every death dealt by the heaviest of blows is a vicious offering to the god emperor and replenishes your toughness to press on. Your benedictions inspire resilience in your allies, and your contempt becomes their shield, brushing off damage for a period of time. As the Emperor's bullet, an empty magazine is not a sign to reload but to face the heretics in glorious melee combat. For every enemy slain, your piety blazes through for all to see, increasing your critical strike chance and whipping you into a faithful frenzy, unleashing a whirlwind of attacks upon the enemy. For every one that you cut down, the punishment for those who remain worsens, until stopping your onslaught is nigh impossible. For every critical blow dealt, your fury rises, stoking the flames of your piety further. In doing so, a lethal eagerness stirs within as you chant invocations of death, reducing the cooldown of your combat ability. Your passion and zeal may often be met with overwhelming odds, but there is nothing like a stun storm grenade to keep enemies in place as you tear them apart. As a redeemer, you are committed to your duty until death. And even then, death might only be a minor inconvenience as you return a holy revenant with a vengeance. Literally too angry to die at the thought that heretics would go unpunished in your absence. Quail heretics, for where the redeemer goes, your redemption comes. Those were the core talents in the talent selection narrative. Now, let's take a look at the first variation which uses an eviscerator alongside a more supportive build path. The purpose of this build is to have as much uptime as possible on Chorus of Spiritual Fortitude, allowing you to frequently provide windows of invulnerability to your team as well as bolstering your team's toughness. Chorus is also excellent at creating space and can completely shut down enemy aggression with banishing light, staggering anything that gets too close. As a support oriented role, it is up to you whether to heed the Ecclesiarch's call for a damage boost or to take up a holy cause for increased toughness damage resistance. Personally, I like taking Holy Cause because combined with Benediction, for the next 10 seconds after finishing my Chorus, my allies get a total of 40% toughness damage reduction on top of their bonus toughness, making them very durable against damage, especially shooters. So why the Eviscerator? Right now, the Eviscerator is one of the Zealot's most powerful and versatile weapons. Between having innately good Horde Clear with a good cleave and a decent single target damage option via the special attack, the Eviscerator also has the Shred Blessing, allowing it to stack up crit chance with consecutive attacks. Most importantly, it looks really badass and we all know that the cooler you look, the more damage you deal. Pairing this with Scourge causes your crits to apply bleed to enemies, and for you to gain increased crit chance on hitting said bleeding enemies. Together with Shred, you have a 50% crit chance when these two buffs are active. Combined with Blazing Piety's 15% crit chance, you have a 65% crit chance buff on top of your base 5% for a total of 70% crit. This works extremely well with Fury Rising, allowing your crits to count towards triggering Blazing Piety, which means as long as you crit, Blazing Piety's 8 second timer is continuously refreshed. We are building into all of this crit chance for the sole purpose of triggering Invocation of Death as frequently as possible, giving you lots of uptime with Chorus. 
The last two points goes into sustaining your assault against the heretics, since it's a general damage buff that works on all enemies and is easy to activate and maintain. With all that said, this is what the whole talent tree looks like now that it is fleshed out along with the eviscerator that I use for this build. After Shred, I choose to have Rampage to cut down hordes more effectively and have opted for Flak and Maniac damage perks since these would be the most common enemies I'll be facing with the Eviscerator. As for your ranged weapon, taking something to quickly deal with specials but also have some ability to deal with carapace is a good choice. For me, a revolver worked best for this but taking an Agrippina slug shotgun or a bolter will also do fine. That was the defensive redeemer build path. Next up is the Thunder Hammer alongside a more offensive build path. The purpose of this build is to act as a team's single target problem solver and insurance policy against demon hosts, as well as generally being a power boost to the rest of the team. Armed with the mobility from Fury of the Faithful with redoubled zeal, the Redeemer is able to close the gap between heretics and follow up with a single devastating strike to purge the unclean, wiping them and their heads clean off the face of Atoma. Taking a Thunder Hammer can be unwieldy in the hands of many, but as long as thy wrath be swift, nothing can flinch you when dishing out the Emperor's mercy. With ranged weapons anointed in blood, enemies thinking they've caught you off guard with gun in hand will find themselves dancing with death as your shots find their mark with pinpoint precision and lethal effect. A righteous warrior of mankind, your piety blazes ever brighter when you have a Thunder Hammer in hand, blessing every blow you land with a chance of more devastation. Here is the talent tree in its totality for this build path along with the Crucis Thunder Hammer I have chosen for this build. In terms of blessings, I think trust is necessary for any Thunder Hammer that intends to deal heavy damage to elites and monsters. The damage multiplier on a fully thrusted up heavy thunderclap is too strong to not take. For perks, unyielding damage is a must to deal as much damage as you can against monsters. After testing a bunch of different thunderclap breakpoints on different elites and specials, to see if any armor-specific perks would make a difference, I have come to the conclusion that for everything that isn't a crusher or a mauler, landing a fully thrusted thunderclap headshot will kill it in one hit no matter what. Otherwise, it's going to take two hits regardless of the damage perk you take. So to this end, I feel that taking plus elite damage actually makes the most sense, because in combination with the last blessing, it helps you cross certain breakpoints across different enemies, like being able to one-shot bodyshot drake rages, and very comfortably two-shot crushers to the hit without niching into carapace damage. As for what the last blessing is, this is probably going to raise some eyebrows, but I've decided that for this build in particular, Thunderous is the best blessing of the thrust. Now some of you might be thinking, really? Thunderous? Why not Slaughterer or Hit Taker or even Skull Crusher instead? A good question. The reason for this blessing is because of how it works together with our choice of ranged weaponry. For the path of the Thunder Hammer, I have decided to pair it with the Cantrell 9 Combat Shotgun. That's the one that fires incendiary shells. This build that I have crafted works perfectly with the Cantrell 9 Shotgun, which needs to be built as follows. You will need a well-rolled Cantrell 9 with both unyielding and flag damage perks, as well as flashé and scatter shot. One of the characteristics of the Cantrell 9's incendiary shells is that it has infinite cleave. It will keep going through enemies until it hits geometry. This makes getting scattershot to max stacks a very simple task. Just point an incendiary shell into as thick a group of enemies as you can and you'll max up the stacks near instantly. This in turn gives you up to 60% crit chance on your next incendiary shell. Whenever you score a crit, not only does it apply 6 stacks of bleed from Fleche on top of your burning damage, but it also activates Fury Rising. Depending on how many enemies you hit in a single shot, you can instantly activate Blazing Piety in one blast, giving you another 25% crit chance on top of Scatter Shot. So as long as you crit with the shotgun, which you will be doing very easily, you can keep activating and refreshing Blazing Piety. Because of this, the Cantra 9 pairs nicely with this build and the Thunder Hammer for two reasons. First, it makes up for the Thunder Hammer's lack of innate crit chance and crit blessings which allows you to more reliably proc Invocation of Death to get your cooldown back faster passively. Secondly, and most importantly, the damage over time effects not only inherit the damage perks from the Thunder Hammer when you switch to it, but it also applies Thunderous to all enemies hit, eroding your armor with brittleness with every tick. This means you can fire a single incendiary shell into a pack of crushers or maulers, setting them on fire, and then immediately switch to your Thunder Hammer to have the burn and bleed damage strip away their damage resistance for everyone on your team. This lets your teammates, who may have weapons that might not ordinarily work against crushers like a braced autogun, 
to actually deal damage to them. For those who are equipped to do so, they will hit even harder. What's more, burning and bleed damage don't have any fall off distance, so you can keep blasting at shooters, gunners and even snipers from afar, and you will kill them in about 2 or 3 shells. Aiming down sights helps tighten the spread of your pellets which affects how much burn stacks enemies receive. If you are in close quarters combat with the shotgun out, dodging successfully allows Dance of Death to tighten the spread, letting you hit really meaty shots even at a distance. This whole build, when put together after much thought and testing, is, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful things I've created. Not the strongest build by any means, but one where things click together and work, where weapon, blessings and talents work together in harmony. What comes of this is an offensive team support zealot that doesn't just deal heavy damage themselves, but allows their team to devastate the enemy as well, armoured or otherwise. Finally, for curios, which applies to both builds, with the amount of toughness regeneration we have access to, especially with the Eviscerator build, I think a 2 toughness 1 health combo is a good way to go. This has worked out fine for me in Auric level games so far, but if you need more health to make up for mistakes, you go right ahead and take what you need. For perks, I lean into stamina regeneration and gunner resistance on all 3 curios for general survivability. The last perk is up to you to pick, but you know me. I like big rewards and big numbers, so I have a couple of plus auto dockets and toughness regeneration speed on mine. That brings us to the end of this pretty large build by my regular standards. I wanted to see how complicated or messy trying to assemble a branching path guide would be in my narrative style. I think it went alright, feels a little long, but I hope the content was worth sitting through. This video took much longer to put together because not only was I trying something new, like making a trailer for it, but I also fell ill along the way, which meant I wasn't in any shape to put this guide together as soon as I had liked. I hope this guide was worth the wait, and look forward to seeing what you guys think about it. Oh, before I go, there's been a small change to my build guides. Given the average view duration of my guides tends to be just focused around the build itself, which is expected, I've elected to remove the gameplay portion from them. This reduces the amount of rendering and waiting around I need to do to produce each guide, but of course, takes a little bit away in terms of content. Let me know what you think about that. Are you alright with this build-only focus, or was the gameplay important to you? See you all in the comments below. That's it for me for now. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Violets.